Hi, welcome to another episode of Orthodontic Matters. We had our 101 uh, class yesterday and uh, we had a good turnout, so thank you for everybody for participating and coming out. And there were just a couple of questions I wanted to follow up with just to make sure that everybody's questions get answered. Um, um, one was the desensitizing material that I use. I use, um, um, here I'll show you the example, it's uh, uh, Ivoclare um, Vivodent Talio CS, it's the single dose um, desensitizer, it works great, I think we probably used it about 10 years, for about 10 years now, um, and it's great for after IPR or if a patient has uh, recession or any kind of sensitivity, it works really, really well, and it doesn't seem to be like a coating, it seems to uh, work really well of clogging the dent dental or tubules, so um, even if the patient brushes really hard, the sensi sensitivity doesn't seem to uh, come back. So it just works really, really well. Um, if you have to do IPR, sometimes we'll use it if you have to, uh, uh, or if a patient had IPR somewhere else and they're sensitive, it, you know, it's really easy to use with the uh, single dose uh, units. They come in a, um, in a low bottle or they come single use. I always use the single use. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's easy to store and stack and stock. Um, the other question was, there was a lot of questions about uh, expansion, um, we kind of touched on that a little bit, um, and I'll show you an example here in a second, um, but um, with expansions it's super important that uh, you, uh, you have an exact goal of how much you need to expand. Uh, and that you don't under or you don't over expand. Um, sometimes if you if you're slightly over expand, that's easier to control if you if you under expand. Um, <clears throat> but um, you want to make sure that you do your model analysis uh, uh, correctly, um, and you, you decide exactly how much you need to expand. And again, don't forget that some of the expansion screws are five turns to a millimeter, and some of the screws are four turns to a millimeter. So make sure you get the correct expansion and and uh, uh, you don't really uh, over expand or under expand. So I'll show you an example here how to measure, but we covered this subject in our mixed dentition class. We're gonna have a mixed dentition class in May. Uh, we usually do it over two days and we cover all these topics uh, of how to treatment plan a mixed dentition case for if they need expansion, uh, what kind of appliances to use, how to order it, and then there's a lot of hands-on practice with it. It's a two-day class. Usually we do it Friday and Saturday. So I'll send out an invite for that. <clears throat> but I use Dolphin software. You can use any software you like or you can use a caliper. Um, if you use Dolphin software, just make sure you scan in your models with a ruler so you can uh, calibrate to it. But um, again, I'll show you an example here in one second how to, uh, uh, how to make sure that you get your model measuring correctly and you know how much to expand in, uh, uh, in your mixed dentitional cases. Uh, sometimes you can see the crossbite and then it's a little bit easier. But like I showed you some of the class 2 cases, you can't see the upper constriction because the patient is class 2 and with the jaw being further back, uh, they have a crossbite in class 1 but they don't have a crossbite in class 2. So make sure to look out for that. Um, so um, I think those were the, all the questions that came up um, and also make sure that if you you know about billing make sure if you post that the comprehensive codes the D8070 and D8090 and 8080 8070 being a mixed dentitional code that you are doing comprehensive orthodontics and it's not interceptive like if you just do an appliance like let's say you just do uh, an expander but you don't really um, you don't do comprehensive treatment planning that you probably have to use the interceptive codes so just make sure that your codes match uh, uh, what you're doing in a case, but oftentimes if you need expansions a lot of times the patients get crowding and and uh, They're gonna need a low lingual arch to control some of the crowding in a mixed dentitional case um, As well as they may need some brackets on them because you get the, the suture or opening and then you get Diastema developing on the upper arch. So a lot of times you have to close that that space um, after the expansion and then you you know you make sure that you retain the upper arch after expansion but we'll cover all those topics um, in the uh, May class now for clear liners we talked a little bit about the open bite developing there's a video here on YouTube about uh, the clear liner open bite um, you can control those by trimming the tray a lot of times like I showed you um, you can trim the tray um, uh, distal to the upper threes or in the lower threes and that will help you close that posterior open bite that oftentimes develops with the clear liners. And um, again, make sure you try to look for cases that have 
uh, class one occlusion and they just maybe have some mild crowding, those are really the best cases for for clear liner or treatment. I mean, once you get better at it, you can probably add some very mild class too, but uh, uh, just complicate things with um, elastics or you can combine the treatment plan with distalizers or expansions. Um, and you can see some of the more experienced doctors do that. Um, but you may want to start out with some simple cases, maybe just a relapse case, somebody who had, the best case is really for clear liners to start out is to pick a case that just, you know, just had some relapse. They have uh, uh, pretty stable class one occlusion, but uh, they have some anterior crowding. Um, and those are usually the, the best cases to kind of start out with clear liners. Um, if you have any questions, welcome to send us an email anytime. Don't forget, we have a two year mini residency starting in the fall. And that's for comprehensive orthodontics. We're going to meet every second month for two years. And that will help you uh, uh, treat, um, you know, these more uh, complex orthodontic cases with straight wires and brackets. Um, and we also have support. So if you need help with case diagnosing or if you need uh, help with uh, self tracing, um, uh, just let us know. Um, we also do uh, uh, kind of like an evaluation, like if you're not sure if you should uh, start a case or if that case is really for your level of comfort, uh, for $50, we just look at the cases, you send us the comprehensive records and uh, and um, we'll take a look at, look at that for you. Um, and uh, just don't forget, you remember the comprehensive records, you have all the pictures, uh, you know, you oftentimes to take models, you take the, the staff um, and the pan, um, usually, uh, um, usually you, do, you take that uh, at the consultation appointment and then, it, then you're going to have the second consultation to go to the treatment plan uh, with the patient. Now, if you just want me to look at a case, you could just send me the pictures, intro or and extra or pictures, if you're not sure if that patient maybe is uh, a good candidate for clear liners. Um, if you send me good extra oral and intro oral comprehensive pictures, that would be probably enough to decide. All right, well, it was very nice to meet everybody and I hope you had a good time. Um, and uh, here, I'll show you the model measuring real quick and then um, uh, we close with that. Well, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Bye. Okay, so we're in the uh, Dolphin program for model analysis. And um, <clears throat> the idea here is to digitally uh, uh, measure uh, crowding and spacing as well as uh, asymmetry and arch dimensions. Um, we can do this with a caliper, but uh, if you have a software, you can uh, easily do this with a software. All you have to do is just scan the models and um, uh, place a ruler on a scanning bed so you can calibrate your um, your image. So um, this has already been um, digitized, but um, basically what you do is um, you go to arch analysis and uh, ruler length, you go to 10 millimeters, uh, and then start and you put the ruler point at 10 millimeters and that will calibrate the arch. And then after that, really all you do is just, it's, it's like the way we used to do with calipers, you just measure each individual teeth. And um, you, I also like to measure the cross bite, um, but the software will measure your crowding and your spacing. Now in this case, um, she's got a, this patient has a canine that's impacted. Um, so we measure the canine um, eight millimeters, which is usually uh, normal width of a uh, upper canine. Um, so uh, the software, it will, it, it will calculate your crowding for you. Same thing on the lower, the lower canines are impacted. Um, so we just measure the normal width of the permanent canine and the software will tell us the, uh, um, the amount of crowding. So it's fairly simple. Um, we, we do this training in our mini residency as well as uh, our mixed dentition class. And uh, once you have a software to do this, it's, it's fairly straightforward to to uh, do these measurements. Also, you can do this with the calipers as well. You don't have to have a software, but the software keeps it very nice and organized and it's just um, easier to do it. Now, I like to put uh, three more measurements on every model. This patient is class two, so the lower arch is further back from the upper arch. Um, I like to measure the upper six to six lingual dimensions as uh, McNamara published it in their study that uh, normally you want about a 36 to 38 millimeters for an average size person with every size teeth to accommodate all the teeth in the arch without crowding. So we would like to have about 30, 
six to 38 millimeters, usually um, on the upper arch with normal size teeth. Uh, this patient has crowding and she is at 32.6 millimeters, uh, which explains why, why she has crowding in class two. Um, now I like to measure the crossbite. This patient has no visible crossbite um, because she is class two, so the mandible is further set back from the maxilla. Uh, so you can't see the crossbite, but if you actually measure in class one occlusion, the mesiobuccal cusp to mesiobuccal cusp is 49.4 millimeters and the buccal groove to buccal groove, if you account for the teeth being uprighted, is 53.8. Uh, Actually, I'm only measuring to here, but the software, for some reason, it puts the lines a little bit longer, but my point is really just only here. So I like to put those three more measurements on my arch analysis, and um, as I said, this, uh, this has been uh, uh, already been analyzed. Um, so once you put all the points on the models to measure all the teeth, all you have to do is just go to measurements, and uh, this will uh, this will give you um, um, all the uh, analysis values uh, that you're looking for. So we can look at it for both arches, um, and um, these are the normal size of the teeth, and these are the measured teeth, um, and it will also give you the amount of uh, crowding and um, um, let's see here sorry just uh, popped up so both arches and then we want to get the amount of crowding you will see the uh, mandible arch has about four millimeters of crowding and you can kind of see that um, right here so the mandible arch is about uh, four millimeter crowding because we got uh, we got a little bit here, about one millimeters, and we got about oh, about one and a half on both sides of this canine. It's probably four to five millimeters. That sounds right on. Um, on the upper arch, um, it shows that we have about 6.4 millimeters of crowding, and that makes about uh, that's about right because the canines are impacted, and there's about three millimeters difference here, and uh, two to three, and there's a couple of millimeters of crowding here, so that's about a six. So, as I said, you can uh, easily do these measurements um, on the Dolphin software, or you can just use a caliper and uh, do the measurements yourself. But we went through this a little bit in class. Now we're going to teach this in more extension, more in more extensively in our uh, mini residency, uh, two-year mini residency, as well as our mixed dentitional class. So, if you'd like to get into uh, um, how to how to do this, and uh, you should understand this uh, uh, very uh, um, deeply and, and in much be details how to do this, um, that would be good to take a class for this, and we're going to spend about two days on this and also just some hands-on practice. And you can tell actually that how much smaller the upper arch is to the lower. So you can you can actually make sense that this uh, arch is constricted, the upper arch, and that's really creating the class two occlusion as well. Um, as we showed in, uh, in the class, it's kind of like the upper arch is being the shoe that holds the lower arch back. So I hope that uh, clears up a, a little bit uh, about what we talked about, model analysis. And if you have any questions, don't forget to uh, uh, give me a call, let me know, and uh, good luck uh, with your, uh, uh, your cases, and uh, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Bye.